there might be a world champion at a gym, say, down in London, who hasn't, he might be a champion, he might be training just as hard as I do, he might kick the pads just as hard, he might hit the bag just as hard, but if he ain't got other 10 world champions around him, pushing in, sparring, I've got the edge. The mindset of a fighter can be applied to anything in life. Once you step in that ring, it is you or the other guy. And for me, that is the kind of thing you can take into business, into education, into whatever it is in bettering yourself. The mindset of a fighter is one of those that we can all apply. So this video from Muay Thai legend, Liam Harrison, talking about that is one of my favorites about adjusting your mindset to become a successful person in all aspects of life. Today's video was brought to you by mulliganbrothers.com where you can now buy the brand new Rise and Grind t-shirts. For those early risers and hustlers out there, go check it out. I'm really happy with how these came out. So thank you to everybody who's been supporting us and the clothing brand so far. You've made the Inspire Change movement possible. Before that, how do we apply the fighter's mindset into all aspects of life? Well, let's listen to Liam Harrison define exactly that. I'm your host, Jordan Mulligan. Let's jump into the video. I was having a fight in about 2010 against one of the heaviest punchers uh, there was ever been of all time. His name was Rano Akkao Samrit. We'd fought before and in the first fight he absolutely destroyed me. But I knew, I knew I could beat him and I thought there was just something not right that night and I knew I could beat him so I begged and begged the promoter over here to bring him to England. I said, I can let me fight him in England in front of everyone because I don't want everyone thinking that I'm just getting smashed a bit. It was the first time I'd ever been stopped in a fight and I got him to England. We fought at the MEN Arena, one of the biggest stadiums in, in England and all my friends and all my family were there. And I remember the camp for that fight. I'd, what I'd usually do were about eight weeks um, and but because I was fighting so regular at the time, a lot of, I might have, a lot of my fights might have only been like eight weeks apart. So I'd have one fight I train eight weeks for, and then I might only have four weeks, have another fight, and then I might only have three weeks and have another fight, so I'm fighting so regular. But for this fight, I didn't accept any other fights. I just had 12 weeks. And I remember on Christmas, I had a drink on Christmas Day with my family, and I said, right, that's me done till the end of March. I said, I'm not going out, I'm not going anywhere other than the gym. Um, I went to Thailand for the first part of it, and I came back, and then I just lived in this gym for 12 weeks, and uh, I beat him comfortably. And I knew I could, I knew I could do it, and it was just like everything I did for that fight, I did more sparring than anyone else in the gym. I ran the a few more miles. We usually run like five miles before training. I ran running seven. Sometimes I ran ten, and then still came in here. Uh, I had to be a bit smart because I was training so hard that my body was getting really tired. But if that happened, I just took a day off or two days off, and I looked after myself and I did everything right, and I, I beat him easily. And um, he was the current stadium champion at the time. He had an 80% KO ratio, which were higher than any other TIE fighter around. And to beat him that easily in front of all my friends and family, um, I'll never ever forget that as long as I live. I don't want to do something unless I'm the best at it. Like when I played football, I was always the best in my team. And like I said, I made it to the level where I was trying, trying for pro clubs and stuff like that. When I walked through this door, I did not want to just fight to like turn up to fights and make up the numbers or anything like that. I wanted to be a champion and that was that. And I'd always stay behind afterwards and after the class I'd go on the bag upstairs on my own. I even used to stand in the mirror and like film myself on my old crappy phones and stuff and like make sure my stance were okay and stuff like that. Uh, and I think even before that, even before camera phones were around when I was about 13, 14, I used to use my, my, my digicam, my dad's recorder and stuff and just film myself to make sure I thought my stance were okay and stuff like that. And that's like, I think, sort of mentality that takes you from being just a, a fighter to a champion. Yeah, your mind will give up before your body long ever does. You just need to tell yourself it won't. Like David Goggins and people like, look what they do with their, their body and it's their mind that's making them do it. Um, I've worked with a mind coach before called Vinnie Shawman and we've done like little bits of work and I, I worked with him for that rematch. And uh, it's hard to explain what he does with people because he does some, it, what he does is it's different for everyone. But I just, my mindset was so strong from working with him. It was, it took, a few weeks and just a few sessions just to instill a few key words into my head and what he had my corner team doing was one of the key words was warrior so he had my corner team saying Liam you're a warrior blah, 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 this that and that and it just helped like keep me so focused and so it focused on the task at hand and stuff like that it's really hard to explain unless you've ever like done it yourself and stuff like that because like I said it, what he does with everyone is different but uh, what he did with that I mean for that fight were unbelievable 
I've been so lucky to train at this gym, to walk through these doors. There's five other Thai boxing gyms around this part of Leeds. And if I would have walked into any of the others, I wouldn't have been where I was today. Um, Richard, my coach, he was British Commonwealth and European champion. He had around 50 fights, so he was very experienced himself. And then Andy, who brought me to the gym, he was, he's ended up being five-time world champion. Me and him trained together every day religiously, and we still do now. Um, then we had Jordan Watson, Again, he's two years younger than me, but he was here at the time and he was already junior British champion. Me and him grown up fighting. He turned out to be three times world champion, fought all the best fighters at his weight. He fought Bukau and people like that, and Yodson Clay was some of the biggest names in the sport. Um, and then we had like other world champions, James France, who's my main sparring partner. And he was, uh, everyone said he was the best technical fighter England's ever had. Then we had Davy Mack, world champion, Rich Caddam, world champion, Lisa Horton, world champion. We had about 10 world champions all in the gym at one time. And I think every other gym in England look to have one or two. And we had 10 all in one place. So if it weren't for these guys here, uh, I'd, I don't know if I'd have got anywhere near like the level of success because we were like a family, but we always used to drive each other up. If one person were looking a bit fit and sharp on pads, it had always pushed us, we can't have that. He's going to knack us next time we're sparring. He's going to batter us, we can't have that, we need to get. So like when we're out running before the, the session, if someone starts to pull away, it's like, no, you can't have that. You've got to, they were like, always that friendly, competitive edge. But when you're, you're sparring and stuff like that, it started to get a bit heated and stuff. And you've got elite level world champions. You've got to be on sharp. You've got to be on point. You've got to be on the ball. Getting the right training method, it's been a lot of trial and error over the years because obviously I've been doing it for so long now. Everyone has to do what's right for their body. I know a lot of like fighters who, who will get up in the morning and run seven, eight miles straight off. Now I don't do any of that because I think it takes too much out of your knees and it ruins your session too much. I do sprint training and because it's a bit more sport specific and I know like a lot of fighters don't really do too much of this. Um, but if you want to be explosive and, and fast and have fast twitch muscles and stuff like that, I think sprint work is very important for that. But I know a lot of fighters who will just get up and just go running for like real slow for seven, eight miles on a morning, which I don't think that's very sport specific at all really. When you fight, you fight in bursts. You don't fight like plodding like you do like that. Um, but my training regimes have been just pretty similar to what everyone else does really. I, I come down, I hit the pads, but I will I'll hit the pads intensely every single time. When I spar, I have it in my head that I'm not gonna lose, right, I'm not gonna lose a round tonight. I'm getting in there with 10 world champions, but right, I'm not gonna lose a round. And if I do lose a round, I'll make sure I'll make the, win the next one even more convincingly, you know? Um, but it's just it's similar to every other every other top level fighter. I clinch, I spar, I do my strength and conditioning, I'll do my sprints. I'll just make sure I try and push myself as far as I can. And I'm lucky that I've had the training partners around me to push me. There might be a world champion at a gym, say down in London, who hasn't. He might be a champion. He might be training just as hard as I do. He might kick the pads just as hard. He might hit the bag just as hard. But if he ain't got other ten world champions around him pushing in sparring, I've got the edge. Thank you so much to Liam Harrison. He was one of the first guys who came to us. He's an absolute legend in the sport of Muay Thai. And his original video is almost a million views now. So thank you so much to him for, for doing that. And he kind of kicked, helped us kick off this, this whole journey of being the filmmakers behind all of these projects. Um, today's video was sponsored by MulliganRivers.com where you can now buy the Rise and Grind t-shirts for all the hustlers out there. Uh, I'm so happy with how these designs came out. We have the Hardest Worker in the Room t-shirts as well. We have basically the whole new gym series and the new Gym Fit t-shirt so they hug on the biceps a little bit more, make you look a bit more swole. Um, yeah, so that's over at MulliganRivers.com. Thank you to everybody who supported us with the clothing brand so far. You make this possible. The Inspire Changing Movement is possible because of you guys. Um, the fighter's mindset, how are you applying that to your life? Did, did some of those already ring true? For me, when I go to work, uh, it, doesn't, it didn't matter when I was working at the store, when I was working a job I hated, when I was working on the telephones, when I was working in sales, I always had that fighter's mindset. I am going to be the best and be better than every single person around me and I'm going to make them look lazy. And that, that's always my goal whenever it... I think you need to adopt that. Even if you hate your job, even if it's something that you are not that invested in, something you don't want to do for the future. Remember that as you go forward with your work ethic, that is one of the biggest skills in life that can give you an advantage for becoming a successful person. And I put that over everything, over all the skills I've learned in the film industry, over all the skills I've learned as a, as a CEO, as a um, businessman, as an entrepreneur. 
none of that matters because this right here, a hard working work ethic, trumps all of that. You can learn skills, but this one right here is a very, very difficult skill to acquire. And it takes hours and hours of beating yourself up, of fighting and uh, struggling against basically the opposite direction of what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to put that many hours in. You're not supposed to feel that much pain and that tired every single day. But if you do it, you develop the work ethic and the fighter's mindset. Um, and I, I implore you to go and do that. I implore you, implore you. I advise you to go do that. Like that is the most valuable skill you will ever have. And the most valuable asset you will ever have is your work ethic. Guys, I have ranted on and off. If you want to go see more of me, head over to Instagram at Jordan Mulligan Brother. Did I mention our sponsors today, Mullenrose.com? Go check them out as well. Have a blessed and productive day. Go inspire some change through your action, actions and uh, have a blessed and productive day. Peace. Go rise and grind, guys.